Hi, it's Dave Parody of thinkoutsidetheslide.com. In a previous video, I had showed how you can use a hack of creating data labels for your data series in a column chart and placing them on top of the columns and used a scatter plot to do that. Well, in the comments on that video, somebody asked, hey, could you do this for a bar chart? Well, you can, but it's a different way of doing it. You still use a scatter plot, but the technique has to be different. And you'll notice here, uh, obviously you can see this in Excel, it's being done. These are data labels on the scatter plot. But let me show you kind of the theory of this first, because it'll make more sense if I do that. So let me just hop over to um, this explanation here. So uh, what we're doing is the scatter plot is going to be essentially placed on top of the bar chart. Now, why is that? For the column chart, the scatter chart and the column chart both have the x-axis and y-axis similar. The y-axis is the measurement axis. But on a bar chart, that's not the same. But a scatter chart can't change its y-axis. It's always vertical. So it doesn't match. So essentially what has to happen here is we're going to add the labels on top of the bar chart. So what happens is the scatter, the scatter plot gets placed on top of the bar chart by placing it on the secondary axis. So anything in an Excel chart on the secondary axis always gets placed in front of or on top of the primary axis data series. So the scatter plot essentially goes on top. And then what we do is we set the horizontal and vertical axes minimum and maximum. This makes it a lot easier for us to position things if we just set it 0 to 1. So the horizontal is going to be set 0 to 1, the vertical is going to be set 0 to 1, and then it gets a lot easier to place the individual uh, markers that allow us to position those data labels. So for example, if we had our first uh, point at x equals 0 and y equals 0 0.95, that puts it on the very left side of the scatter plot and pretty close to the top, which usually lands on about the first bar. And then we add the data label beside that marker. Now, obviously, we're going to get rid of the marker, as you'll see. But this is the kind of theory that we're using is we are uh, setting up the scatter plot. We are determining the minimum and maximum so we can take control of where that gets placed. So with that sort of theoretical underpinning, let's go back to Excel and I'll show you how we do this. So in this case, uh, unlike the column chart, we don't have a lot of uh, really any helper cells to set up. We're all manually typing in the column labels here, the X and the Y uh, values for the column label. So I'm going to start by selecting my data and uh, simply going to insert uh, my regular clustered bar chart, the, you know, the standard bar chart that we all use. So I'm going to uh, simply make this a little bigger so we can see it. And you'll notice it does have the legend down at the bottom as, as we would expect it to do it. And like all bar charts, it is ordered what some people would think in reverse order. So the first thing we do is we select this vertical axis. We press control one to bring up the formatting task pane and we say put the categories in reverse order. Now what this does, it puts the measurement axis at the top of the chart, which is the, kind of the normal way we do bar charts. So we set up the bar chart, we've got the legend down at the bottom, and one of the things we need to do next is to add this scatter plot. So you notice I do have the list of steps here on the, on the left if you want to follow along. So we're going to add the scatter plot, and this is similar to what we did in the previous video. We're going to go to, once we selected the chart, we're going to go to uh, up here in the chart design ribbon. We're going to go to the select data button, and that opens the select data dialog box. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a new data series. And it says, okay, so where's the series name? So let me zoom out so we can see this a little easier. So the series name is going to be column label, so I simply select that cell there. And then when it asks for series values, I'm going to highlight everything that's in there, hit delete because I want to clear it out. Otherwise, you get some weird things happening and it gives you errors. So it's just easier to start fresh. And I'm going to select my Y values. Now, why do I select the Y values? Again, as you saw in the previous video, that's what Excel is expecting. It doesn't know it's a scatter plot yet. So it thinks, well, I just need Y values, which is the length of the bars. 
So that's what we start with. Click OK. And we notice we now have this added in the list. We click OK again. And we have these yellow bars here. But of course, we want to change them to a scatter plot. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, right click on that bar and I'm going to say change series chart type. And here's where I get the combo, custom combination. And in the lower uh, section here, I can set the chart type for each of my data series. Now, when I select for the column label, so I'm going to change it from the clustered bar to, let me scroll down here to get to the scatter, XY scatter. When I select that, notice something here. It automatically changed it to be on the secondary axis. That checkbox for the secondary axis is there. Why? Because it knows it cannot have a bar chart and a scatter chart on the same primary axis. They're not oriented the same way. So it has to change it. You don't have a choice on this. It forces this. But that's okay. Again, we're thinking about, we're placing it on top, which is what it's done anyways. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, click OK. I have the dots there. So just as we did before, now we have to add the X values for the scatter because it hadn't asked us for that earlier. So I'm going to click on Select Data. I'm going to go back to my column labels and say Edit. And here again, it, it has a blank set of X values because it didn't know before. Now I'm going to select these. Now, they're all zero. Why? Well, because zero is going to be on the far left, which is exactly where we want them to be anyways. So I've just typed in numbers that I think is you know, going to be close enough. So I'll go ahead and say OK and click OK. And now you'll notice these yellow dots, which are the markers for that scatter, are all on the far left side. But they're not really very close to those top three set of columns. And that's because Excel has decided on the minimum and maximum for each of these axes. I don't think we should leave it up to Excel. We need to take control of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my vertical axis here. And if you don't have the formatting task pane, you can just press Control-1 to open it again. And I'm going to go to my axis options here. I'll zoom in for you. And you'll notice what it's done is it has set its own minimum and maximum. Picked it on its own. Didn't set it to zero, just picked it on its own. Uh, don't worry, I have a whole video on why it does that. But I'm going to force it. So I want this to be zero. And I want the maximum to be 1. Now, even though it said 1, I typed it in and hit Enter. Why? Because I don't want it to change it in the future. So now what I've done is I have forced it to be 0 to 1. And hey, look, each of the dots are now closer to where I want them to be. Okay. Now I have to do the same thing for the horizontal axis. Because again, I don't want Excel going and making some decisions on its own but we don't see the horizontal axis. We have to turn it on first. So I'm going to use the skittle here to turn on the uh, secondary horizontal axis. So I'll check that. Now I can select it and I've got to close this here. Select it and again, the minimum is zero and the maximum is one, but I don't want to let Excel have control. So I'm going to type in zero and I'm going to type in one. Enter. So now I'm forcing that. Now I can turn this off because I don't need it. So I'll go back through the Skittle and turn off the secondary horizontal axis. I can turn that off. Okay. Now I have my markers, but they're not kind of in the spot that I want. But I'm not sure if they really should be there or not because I've got this legend. So let's get rid of the legend. Make sure we turn that off. And yeah, they're still not kind of exactly where I want them to be. So this is where you're going to manually position them. And you can mainly position the, the markers, but it's not always going to be perfect until you add the text. So often what I'll do is, is actually add the data labels first, then change the positioning, because it's really the text that I want lined up, not those little circles. I'm going to select that data series by selecting one of those circles, make sure I got that selected. And in my format data series, I'm going to go to my uh, colors here where it sets the colors of the line and the markers. I'm going to go to the marker, and in the marker options, I'm going to say none. I don't actually want there to be a marker, of course. Close that. And now I am going to add the data labels. So I'm going to use my Skittle to add the data labels. Again, I have to go to more options here because I want to add the custom data labels. 
which are the names of the, in this case, states, the, the data series. So I'll go to my label options, and in my label options here, you notice it says one of the options is value from cells. So I'm going to select that, and it asks me, okay, where? Where, where are these cells that you want to use? Select the data label range. So I'm simply going to go over, select these cells here, and click OK. And notice it adds those in. Now the thing I have to do is to get rid of the Y value because I don't, I don't need the actual number there. And the label position I'm using to the right, which is fine because I want it to be to the right of where that dot was. Now I have my labels positioned where I want them to be. The only other thing that's going to potentially affect the positioning of your labels is how wide your bars are. So if you want to change that, go ahead and select one of those and select the gap width. The default here is 182%. I usually prefer something around 50%. And because I've changed it, notice now those labels are just about positioned about what I want. The only problem is I can't really see them. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to select them. I'm going to go to my home ribbon and just change the font color to white. So we can see them. I can make them bold as well if I, if I wanted to stand out a bit more. Now, here's where you're going to have to adjust the Y values. You're going to have to maybe play with them a bit. If that Indiana, maybe that's a little higher than I want. Remember, it's 0 to 1 vertically from bottom to top. So maybe I make this 0.87 and see if that works. Oh, actually, that's a little too low. So I'm going to leave it at 0.88. Now, obviously, I had selected these in advance because I knew they were going to be pretty close. So that's how we get those data labels from the scatter plot on top of the bars. We can position them wherever we want with these X and Y values. If you wanted the, these labels to be, let's say you wanted them to be outside the bars, you can do that by simply changing the X value. So let's say I change this first X value to, let's say, about uh, 4.5, uh, and it moves it. I have to change the uh, font color here because otherwise you can't see it. Let me change it to green. So it moves it, you see, outside if you want to. You have total control of that. Let's go back to our, uh, our white and our, our zero here because I actually like that look better. The final thing we have to do is to just simply set this secondary vertical axis, which still has numbers there, to not be there. And a couple different ways to do that. You could turn it off. I actually tend to uh, do it not by turning it off, by simply setting the labels here. So in my formatting task pane, I'll set my labels. Instead of saying next to axis, I'll set them to none. And it's equivalent to turning that axis off. It just says don't put any labels there, so it doesn't put any labels there. So this is how we use this hack of placing a scatter plot on top of a bar chart, because it's on that secondary axis, and then we control the X and Y values to position our data points, which are where our data labels are going to be positioned. So it allows you to have the control you want for labeling. And this really goes back to, as I said in, in the original um, video, really goes back to the research from Professor John Sweller of the University of New South Wales and how important he says it is to put explanatory text in as part of the visual. That's why we always want to put that explanatory text, in this case it's the series names, inside the chart and not leave it to the legend, whether it's below or beside, somewhere else where people have to go back and forth in order to figure it out. Use this hack by using a scatter plot on top of your bar chart to add your labels and any other explanatory text you want into your bar charts. Make it easier for your audiences to understand. If this video has been helpful, please make sure you've clicked that subscribe button so you get notified of any new videos that come out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.